thought about putting this video out for a little bit because it's a failure. I didn't finish the music video, my effects didn't work, and uh, I didn't know if it was any significance in it, but failures are just as important, if not more important than uh, successes. So I kind of just want to talk y'all through why this failed, what I learned from it, and kind of just, you know, let y'all know it's cool to fail. Fails are dope. <laughs> I went out the other day and uh, I wanted to film a music video on the Nikon Z9. I got this in a couple days ago. Nikon sent it to me to try it out and buy it. So I wanted to test it on a music video. My problem was I didn't have a CF Express card. So I ordered one from B&H and the CF Express card was supposed to come in the exact same day that I was heading out to shoot the music video. I sat in the house all day, waited for the package and turns out uh, my shipment got postponed and pushed back. So I found a nearby Best Buy and uh, I got a CF Express card from there. But the problem was the CF Express card was only 128 gigabytes, which seems like a lot, but when you're trying to film in 4K ProRes RAW, it's not that much at all. I was originally gonna film this video in 8K, but I don't use DaVinci Resolve. I wasn't gonna be able to really utilize uh, the, the capabilities of the RAW inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So I filmed ProRes RAW and in ProRes RAW on a 128 gigabyte CF Express card, you only get about nine minutes of footage. So that's my first problem. We get to the location, we're setting up for the scene and we go inside the location. Mind you, it's raining. That's another problem. That's another issue that came to us today. It's not sunny, which means that the lighting inside of this building was significantly lowered because it was no direct sunlight hitting the windows. Overcast just completely shredded our day. Even if it wasn't overcast, we probably had about three hours of shooting time inside of this location. We get in, we set up our first scene on the Nikon Z9 and the lens that I'm shooting with, uh, the aperture, the lowest aperture on it was like an f2.8. Inside of this location, even at an f2.8, the ISO that I had to film the first shot on was 8,000. So 8,000 ISO for the first shot. <laughs> Mind you, we're running out of time, uh, but I just decided to shoot it because I was like, okay, I'll be able to salvage it. We set up the scene. I'm looking to get this infinite spin effect using my Edelchrome pan head. And I was gonna have them in different locations inside of the scene performing. And then in post, I was gonna mask it. The footage from the Z9 at 8000 ISO was grainy, but it looked good in terms of having a good base for a denoise. After I denoised the footage, it looked really good. It was time to do the color for it. I decided to use a LUT from the MLUT Restyle Pack. These LUTs are color remapping LUTs. So they remap certain hues to different colors. So if you want an abstract look for your music videos, these are great for this. Or if you're looking to get a LUT on your footage that does a good job at separating hues. It's also a really good option for that as well. With my music video, I didn't really wanna shift the hues too crazy. I wasn't looking for an abstract, like over the top look. I just wanted my skin tones to look crispy and I wanted other tones that were like blues and teals and stuff like that to kind of pop out more. It just gives me a really nice separation with this. So I selected one of the LUTs from the Restyle Pack and MLUT and uh, this was already a really good base for the footage, but I wanted to go more on the warmer side of things. I like when my highlights are warm, it just kind of sets in the gray a little bit more. I wanted it to feel like really, 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 really like cinema-ish if that makes sense. I added the three color wheels. I shifted the temperature all the way to warm and this looked really good. I really love the way that this footage came out and it gets me really excited for when we go back and actually kill the music video. Another really cool thing you can do inside of MLUT is you can add grain. So I added a little bit of grain to bring me some texture back from the denoise base and the footage looked incredible from right there. But another thing that I decided to do was I decided to add a movement overlay from the M Music Video plugin for Motion VFX. I reviewed this in a previous behind the scenes. I'll leave a link up above if you guys wanna check that out. I added a dynamic movement over top of this and this essentially gave my footage movement and energy from me shooting this completely static. So if you shoot a shot static and you want to add like some energy to it later on, this thing is awesome and it's just drag and drop. I wanted to add something else to spice it up. I added these glitch overlays from the Restyle plugin and these I like a lot because they animate in and they animate out. I just copied and pasted these throughout this footage and this was the look that I intended to have throughout this music video, just to spice it up and give it that extra flair. The Emory Style Pack is awesome because it has a ton of different overlays that you can add to your footage, like CCT overlays, you got different dreamy effects, you got different glitch overlays, you got graphic effects. So if you wanna go more on the animated side with your footage to give it a different flair, it looks totally different than what you see. 
this is great. It also has a retro overlay section as well. So if you want to do something that's more vintage, it's easy to do as well. All these are drag and drop. And you basically just put them over top of the footage that you want to affect, adjust the different parameters that you can do for it. And you have a solid look that's really easy to do. So this is how I was able to salvage this footage, even though I didn't finish the music video. The effects and stuff that I'm going to add to the music video when I go back and actually finish it are going to be awesome. And I'm excited because even at 8,000 ISO, this footage looked incredible with these different plugins that I was using for Motion VFX. Make sure you guys check out Motion VFX. It's going to be a link down in the description. And every single one of these plugins that I talked about is also available on DaVinci Resolve. So my Resolve people, you can utilize these effects as well. Final Cut, you already know. They have a ton of different effects beyond this as well. I highly recommend you guys check out Motion VFX. So I shot my different takes trying to do this pan effect. Got to post, realized it didn't work. I don't know what happened. It might have been my torque setting on my pan head. I have no clue. It just didn't work. So we set up the next scene. The next scene was going to kind of be a duplication scene as well. Not involving pan, but I wanted to get this really clean performance of VDOT with a nice composition and then have different versions of him throughout the scene. And I was going to go through and do VFX and mask those together. And then from there, I would have been able to add a movement overlay from the M Music Video plugin. Have that look really dope just to come in the intro, just, you know, just kind of pop out at people like, dang, this is dope. We coming straight into the music video with Sign Fire. So we filmed a couple different takes of this, a performance, just him doing, you know, random B-roll, walking through the scene, chilling, performing in different parts of the, uh, the frame. And uh, these shots turned out dope. Um, but by the time we got to this, we just like, we're doing really bad on time. And I also had to bring my laptop in from the car to transfer some of this footage onto my laptop because I only had nine minutes of footage on this memory card. So that was just uh, a hassle in itself. The transfer process was really fast, but it was just something that was a hassle to do. We get to this next part of this location and I wanted to get some really nice Ronin shots some Ronin performances of him up against these nice large windows. These windows were fire. And uh, I wanted to get like some silhouette shots of him because we didn't have much light. You know, it was getting shadow from the opposite side. I put the Z9 on the Ronin and it balanced out perfect. This is the Ronin M. And then I want to go add in my HDMI cable for the Z9 to put into my monitor on the Ronin. The problem with that is the cable hit the side of the Ronin arm. So that didn't work. I wasn't able to use my monitor. I had to run the Ronin without my monitor on it. So my framing was terrible. I also didn't really know what I was doing with the autofocus on the Z9. So a lot of those shots were chalk. The framing was terrible. It was just, <laughs> it was just a lot of bad stuff happening. I ran through a couple performances. I realized that none of those performances were good at all. I took it off of the Ronin. I got some handheld shots. And the thing about using Nikon cameras as opposed to Canon cameras that I usually use is that everything is backwards. The way you attach a lens to the camera body is backwards. The way that you focus on the lens is backwards, which totally hindered me in getting these handheld shots. I'm used to turning the focus wheel on a lens a certain way on Canon cameras in relation to where I needed to focus at. So me trying to do that exact same way on a Nikon camera totally screwed me because it's backwards. <laughs> So I had to get used to that. I filmed a couple different handheld performance takes. These looked cool, but after that, we pretty much ran out of time. I had a couple performances. I didn't have enough B-roll. I wasn't sure if the performance shots that I got were even gonna work because some of them were shot at 8,000 ISO, some at 4,000, 5,000. This is my first time using this camera. I didn't know how it was gonna hold up in low light. And I honestly thought about just continuing to shoot and just salvage the footage in some sort of creative way. Maybe add more grain, add more stylistic choices, more uh, overlays from the Emory style pack for motion VFX. But I thought about the intent of the video. My whole intention on using the Z9 was to show people the quality and what the camera can do in good scenarios and how it can be used by someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> so me bringing this footage back to the house, throwing a ton of grain on it, throwing a ton of effects on it, throwing some transitions on it, wouldn't have really showcased that at all. So despite the fact that I was able to get some really clean shots and actually salvage these shots and make them look really good, I love the way they look. It just really didn't match the intent and the reason why I was shooting the video the way that I was. So I failed, but it's cool though, because I learned a lot. I learned how this camera holds up in low light. I learned how I need to work on setting up the autofocus. I learned that my Ronin M doesn't work with it. I learned that sometimes if the weather's not right, maybe you should push it back and shoot it at another time or shoot it another day. So despite the fact that this was a fail, I learned a lot and I think that fails are very important. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna crush this music video. And the fact that I got these shots at 8,000 ISO 
and I was able to bring them back home and I make them look incredible just got me so much more hyped for when I go back to this location and the circumstances are better. The lighting's better. I got more time. I got more ideas. I know what I need to adjust and, and figure out in camera. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm gonna go back next week and I'm gonna crush this music video and it's gonna be an in-depth behind the scenes when I do. It's gonna be more audio from on set. It's gonna be like more uh, like in-person aspect of the behind the scenes, which is gonna be really dope. So I failed, man, but I just wanted to let y'all know, man, sometimes fails is cool. Do me a favor, head down to the comment section and let me know. What was your worst fail on set? What happened? Did you not bring your batteries? Did you not bring the plate for your gimbal? Did you not have a memory card? Your camera overheated? Let me know. I wanna know down in the comment section below. Make sure you guys check out Motion VFX because they have a ton of different effects and plugins that just speed up that workflow for editing. It just gives you so many more creative options for your music video that you might not even know how to do, or they just make that process of creating these things so much easier. I love Motion VFX and I uh, highly recommend you guys check out the website. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a like, but with that being said, I'm out y'all. Peace.